Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code 1FREEPP for a free single card today. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the main event at Gulfstream Park, star studded Saturday afternoon. It finishes up with the Florida Derby. Race number 14 for the three year olds. Let's take a look at this field. We're going a mile and an eighth. It's obviously a grade one. It's a million dollar race, and it's the rematch between Hades and Fierceness. They sat out the fountain of youth after Hades upset the two year old champion in the Holy Bowl. It's, we'll see if, uh, if Fierceness can get a little redemption here, Danny. He's pretty disappointing in the three-year-old debut last time. Maybe a little excuse there, but uh, man, that was, a, that was a pretty disappointing performance. We'll see if he can bounce back. Hades showed good speed. He had an inside post on Fierceness in the Holy Bull. He's got it again in the Florida Derby. We throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. A bit surprised that they have Hades sitting in fourth place after the opening half mile. I would have to think that Paco Lopez is going to take advantage of this inside post and go. And if Fierceness breaks, which was a bit of an issue last time out, he'll be his shadow. Yeah, I agree, Dan. I mean, they're going to, I think they're going to get aggressive with Hades here from post two. The pace projector just sort of takes into account the fractions these horses have been running in past races and in Hades most recent start. Luckily for him, he just went a super slow pace and took advantage. He certainly did walk that day. He's going to take on some other nice runners in here, including the horse with the fastest time form U.S. late pace rating. That's a horse stepping up into the stakes ranks for the first time out, uh, seeking his Third consecutive victory is the number nine, Conquest Warrior, Frankie's Empire, who's had a pretty nice winter here at Gulfstream Park, Mike. He won the swale going seven-eighths of a mile. He caught the easiest of spots in the Fountain of Youth. I mean, Doorknock was odds-on after several scratches, and he ran just fine to be third. No match for the winner, but gaining on the runner-up, Le Dombro on the wire. He draws the rail. He probably can work out a decent trip. He's got to improve. Yeah, true enough. I mean, he's one, he's four for eight. That's a good thing. He's already a stakes winner. That's a good thing. But all of his rate, all of his victories are sprints. They stretched him out last time, ran okay in that race. And listen, him, he was in that fountain of youth. So were the, the second place finisher, the fourth place finisher for that race. They're all back in here. That race turned out to be weak because of some very uh, important scratches. This race is pretty weak as well, Dan, but I think it's probably still tougher than that one. Hades is the number two, and he jumped onto the Kentucky Derby Trail in his third lifetime start, winning the Holy Bull. We're going to watch that race right now, and Lopez just got to the front. And these fractions, considering the short stretch and the quality of horses, 25 flat, 50 and 2. There's fierceness on the outside. Hades is sprinting on home, however, and he's going to get there first over domestic product who would come back and win the Tampa Bay Derby. So Hades showed that if you give him a breather on the back stretch and a nice easy pace, he's going to sprint home. I think he's making the lead again. I have a feeling they're going to make him run a little harder the opening half mile. I do too. Um, and, and, he do, and he's also going to be a much shorter price this time, which is another sort of knock against the source as far as wagering is concerned in the Florida Derby. It's still another good spot for this horse though, Dan, because this race did not come up strong. And I know that he got a little lucky, or at least you could look at his holy ball and say that he got a little lucky to win last time. I like all three of his races. This horse has talent. He has talent. He's unbeaten. And again, he's paired up by her tops in his last two of 90. Wouldn't be surprised with a forward move and a front running ride. The three is Ballas out going out for trainer Todd Pletcher. He sprinted in his debut and he ran on at the end of that race to pass a couple of tired horses. He then showed up over the tapita surface at Gulfstream Park in this race, a maiden special going a mile and a 16th. Ballas out doesn't have a ton of early speed bike, but at least he gutted it out here as the favorite. He is a slow learner, a slow developer, but perhaps the $700,000 son of looking at Lucky's peaking at the right time, perhaps he found the right field. Yeah, he, that's th all those things are true. I think he can take another step forward in this race, Dan. I know that the race we're watching here is on a different surface, but he just, he looked like he really benefited from the debut, which was on dirt sprinting. He was so green in that race, almost lost contact with that field early, and then actually made a little run into that race. I thought it was a useful debut for this horse. And he clearly improved last time. It was a different surface, but he clearly improved. It feels like there's something there. It didn't make me want to bet him back against this field. 
The number four is Grand Mo the first. He's never been off the board from five lifetime starts. And I thought he ran pretty well last time out in the Tampa Bay Derby. We're going to watch that race right now. Keep in mind, there's no pace going on at all. The runner up was able to make the lead. A domestic product who would have been the favorite if the tote board didn't crash is going to eventually get him. Grand Mo the first carried a lot of ground around both turns, Mike. He was wide and he's still punching on at the end. Yeah, got a you know three or four wide trip in this race, and he does stay at the end of this race. But this is a race where everybody was staying at the end, Dan, because they went really slow early, and they were all running late. And this horse did the best that he could do in there. It wasn't a terrible performance. Um, it wasn't a performance that necessarily made me want to bet him back in a race like the Florida Derby. But again, he's in the same boat as everybody else. This race did not come up that tough, and if fierceness for whatever reason, is just one of those horses who needs things, you know, to be his own way in order to perform, and he doesn't have a great trip in this race, it's wide open. Real Macho is the number five. He pulled off a big upset going a one-turn mile, two starts back, rating from off the pace in a first-level allowance. That spot earned him an opportunity in the Fountain of Youth, where he kind of was off slow, rushed a little bit, and tired. He's another horse with tactical speed. His buyer from two starts back is somewhat interesting. I'm curious to see how far he wants to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about that, too, because the, you're right. The race two back actually gives him at least some kind of a look in here. But he was turning back in that race from two turns to one. And now he's stretching. He's going to have to stretch out again off the fountain of youth where, you know, let's be honest, Dan. It was a pretty good spot for this horse to wind up in. And he didn't do that much running. The number six is Ladome Bro, and he's had a pretty fruitful campaign at Gulfstream over the winter. He had a tough trip, went second in the swale, going seven-eighths of a mile. Then this race, the Fountain of Youth, again, a lot of scratches helped him. There was a big favorite in here, Doorknock, one of the better three-year-olds in the country, and no excuses for Ladome Bro, who pushed a moderate pace from the inside, took his shot on the turn, and is merely second best under the line. A solid effort, but one that he's going to have to build on against a tougher field. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't know what to make of these three horses coming back in this race out of the Fountain of Youth. And I mean, I just didn't really like any of them. Um, I I liked for the most part the ride this horse got last time because they had the round. They just sort of went. They ran to the first turn on the lead. Maybe if they could do it differently, they wouldn't concede the door knock in there and just go to the front and see if they could cut that pace out and it makes a difference. I doubt it would have. Over overall, he had a good trip last time. He wasn't good enough, and I don't want to bet him back against this field. Yeah, I didn't think he was good enough that day, and I would assume that this time around they're going to take him off the pace. I got to look at his last workout, and they gave him a target, three, four lengths in front of him. So maybe he's going to try to sit in the second flight. Don't think he's fast enough to make the lead. Catalytic is the number seven. Bit of a tough spot here for the Safi Joseph trainee because he's stretching all the way out off of two sprints, but he had an excuse in this race at Tampa Bay Downs last time out. He was favored in this first level allowance, and he just didn't get out of the gate with uh, a lot of skill. He's so far back turning into the stretch. He ends up behind a gate to wire winner, but you're going to know him late. Yeah, he's going to just suddenly appear on your screen here in the late stage of this race. And he's really running at the end of this race. This is actually a pretty good performance from this source. He's gaining very quickly at the end. He's only going to be second best. His debut, he's just a tough call there. His debut, he looked good winning there. Um, but man, you go through that field that he beat. It just feels like he beat an atrocious field first time out. I liked his, his most recent start. I don't know if this is the right spot for him. His last race, however, was off a five-month layoff, and maybe he just was a little bit rusty coming out of the gate. I think he can settle into a good mid-pack spot. Distance, huge question. Class, huge question, but it's not the toughest Florida Derby in the world because the favorite have quest, favorites have questions. Seminole Chief is the number eight, and he got a beautiful trip in his Tapita debut last time out at Gulfstream, going a first-level allowance. Let's watch Seminole Chief, Mike. He was just able to get to the lead and walk it. 24-1, and one, almost a 48-second half mile, and he's able to sprint on home we saw him in the withers two starts back if you want to give him the muddy track excuse fine he was a good florida bred last year he'll need a career best yeah he's just gonna have to move forward uh, one more time here he didn't improve in this race but he has never really faced a challenge in there dan on a different surface so i think it's it's pretty hard to gauge him i'll say this i think he's a little underrated i, I liked a couple of the a couple of his races as a two-year-old when he won that in reality he really earned that win um i just don't think that that kind of a running style is going to play that well in this race 
I wonder if sort of the wise guy horse in this race is the nine conquest warrior making his stakes debut for the great Shig McGahee. He's won his last two starts and perhaps most importantly, he won it a mile and an eighth last time out. Let's watch the stretch drive of that race. A first level allowance conquest warrior is three to five and conquest warrior wins like a three to five shot should. You got a great trip in this race, but this is exactly what you wanted to see from this horse um, right off of the maiden win. He handled the distance just fine. He actually wins this race really easily good trip or not and and dan I don't, maybe you don't agree with this the race two starts back was even more impressive he got oh. crushed between horses at the start of that race and really ran he's obviously good um and this isn't a tough florida derby but it's not like he's going to be some kind of great price in this race dan and he's got to improve now he looks the part though seven figure yeah. yearling by city of light you mentioned overcame that little trouble two starts back and then last time out was able to get it done very easy and geared down fierceness is the 10 he's last year's two-year-old champion he looked so good winning the breeders cup juvenile he decided to show up that day his debut was super at saratoga then he bombed in the champagne the breeders cup juvenile just worked out beautifully for him the pace wasn't fast he sat second he got the jump and he was able to put those horses away we saw the holy bull yes he was wide chasing a slow pace but he had every chance against hades turning for home and he got turned back yeah i i have nothing to add to that that was a very disappointing race off the layoff last time it was another race though where he did he got bumped between at the start and then he wound up wide it was sort of a similar thing with the only other bad race it was for the champagne where he sort of was unsettled when the gate opened and then he lunged forward he just didn't break great and it maybe that's just something this horse can't handle dan he wants to break smoothly and get right up close I'll tell you what, I, he's hard to trust now because of that, that Holy Bull last time, but his maiden win was really good. His Breeders' Cup Juvenile was really good. And if he runs one of those, he's winning this race. I think he's the most naturally talented horse in this race by far. I'm sure he's infuriated his connections because of races like the Champagne and the Holy Bull, which are somewhat of head scratchers. But if he breaks well, he's going to be sitting in a great spot. Iris's dream completes this field. Very tough post position. 11 scored last time out on the turf and thought it looked pretty good doing it. Maybe that's where his future lies. They're going to take a shot here and he's going to be a giant price. So you can't knock him too much. Yeah, right, exactly. I mean, he's he's a huge price in here. He's got a tough outside post, but I guess they just take him back and try to make one run here and see if they can get a check. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Florida Derby. Uh, fierceness is way the horse to beat in here, Mike. I think he's the most likely winner by a long way, but we'll see. Uh, you know, sometimes he feels like it and sometimes he doesn't. Yeah, exactly. I don't have uh, uh, any problem with anybody who just wants to try to beat him one more time in here, Dan. I couldn't find the horse to do that with. Uh, to me, this is just a good spot for him, and I'll, I'll take him on top. I'm not betting this race. Merely a stab with Ladome Bro for me, a horse that showed a little bit of improvement last time out, had a little bit of trouble in the swell. Think he'll work out a decent trip, but boy, I do think fierceness, if he shows up, is way the horse to beat. Perhaps you split the favorites with the six if you use him in single race exotics. 10 2 7 9 for Mike, 6 10 2, 1, for me. It's the Grade 1 Florida Derby, an important prep for the Kentucky Derby. Best of luck.